Well, for Texas State, they certainly had an opportunity in the final two games of the regular season to give themselves better positioning in the Southland Conference. In fact, Texas State could have very well gotten the top position, or at least a share, of the regular season title had they won at least one of their last two games against Lamar or Sam Houston State. Unfortunately for Texas State, Neither happened. Texas State lost both games, both of which were on the road in very tough environments in Beaumont against Lamar and then against in Huntsville against Sam Houston State. Let's kind of talk about a little bit about Lamar first and what happened in that ball game. Texas State fell behind by 20 plus points in the second half at one point. They rallied, they came back to it within four points at 101 97 with about two minutes to go in the ball game, but they just couldn't quite make enough shots at the end of it to keep them to get, at least give themselves an opportunity to either tie the ball game up or get the lead Lamar winning that one 113 102 the final score Lamar finishing their season this year at 13 and 16 7 and 8 in the Southland Conference they're not making the tournament it was a huge win for them because of that fact the fact that they're not making the tournament after the, after this ball game the, the fact that Lamar beat Texas State so well they, play, they played well in this ball game the Cardinals of Lamar did Mike James and Brandon Davis combined for 52 points on the evening for Lamar a little bit less than half of the points scored by the Cardinals for Texas State though it, it, once again, I guess, you look at the previous week where we talked about Texas State and what happened with them when they lost their last ball game. They lost, or excuse me, when they defeated UTSA. They won by two, but they had a lot of struggles. Against Lamar, the same way. They struggled. They, they, they just couldn't come up in the clutch. And unfortunately, against, unlike UTSA, they just couldn't pull out the victory in that ball game. For the Bobcats, they were led by their leading scorer, Tony Bishop, who scored 27 points in the ball game, leading the Bobcats, and he also gained another, or excuse me, he also led rebounding for Texas State with 12 rebounds in the ball game. But unfortunately for Texas State, they just tried to make, try to attempt too many three pointers in this ball game. So they were six of 22, six for 22 for 27 percent beyond the arc. From the field, they were 49 percent. They weren't that bad, but from a three point arc, they were. 27%, just way too many threes taken by Texas State, and then threes that were not successful. That leads to a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of one-and-done type of opportunities on the offensive side of the floor for the Bobcats. Compared against Lamar, who was hitting all their shots, they shot 51% from the field and 48% from three-point line. It's easy to see why Texas State fell in this ballgame. But one reason, because Lamar shot well. Secondly, because Texas State didn't and gave Lamar a lot of opportunities to go right back down the floor and score points. So for Texas State, that was a tough loss for them. They just couldn't. They, it was a tough loss for them losing to Lamar. They fell to 15 and 14 and 10 and 5 in Southland Conference play. Three days later, on the Mar on March 5th, they played against Sam Houston State in Huntsville. But like Lamar, it just wasn't a good game for Texas State. The Bobcats fell 68-52. Texas State once again falling behind. But unlike the Lamar game, the Bobcats did not make a recovery. They didn't make that, that, that comeback that they've been so accustomed to this year, and they fell apart in the second half. Sam Houston State played very well in this ball game. They shot from the field 41% and 36% from beyond the arc. They shot very well, led by their leading scorer, Lance Pebahouse, who scored 25 points in the ball game, leading all scorers on the night. For the... Texas State Bobcats, they were not led by Tony Bishop in this ballgame at all. In fact, it was Ryan White who scored 15 points and had 10 rebounds in the ballgame. Tony Bishop only Tony Bishop got 15, 14 points, but he was non-existent from the board. So credit Sam Houston State for keeping him away from the, from the, from the backboard and keeping him away from any significant rebounds. The thing is, though, Texas State in this ballgame shot poorly. 
from everywhere in the field. They were 32% from the field in this ball game against Sam Houston State, and they were 23% from beyond the arc. Once again, like the Lamar game, they tried to make too many threes. They tried to, they attempted too many threes. They were missing, and Sam Houston State had the opportunity to go right back down the floor and score quickly. Texas State cannot have that happen if they want to succeed later on in the tournament, and we'll get to that in a second. But once again, Texas State fell behind, but this time they could not make a comeback. So, for the Bobcats, their season, regular season, ends with a two-game losing streak, and now the record stands at 15-15 at and 15 overall. They are, 500, they are a 500 ball club, and they are, they are in conference play. They're 10-6 and six in the Southland Conference. They had an opportunity to get at least second, if not first, in the conference tournament, but Texas State failed to do so, and now they're going to have to reap what they've sown in the Southland Conference Tournament. Okay, well, let's talk about the Southland Conference Tournament as a whole, and this is going to be a very interesting tournament for, the, for this conference. And, and, and once again, for a lot of people who might not know and might, might not realize, unlike the Big 12, unlike the Big East, unlike a lot of the other power conferences in college basketball, the Southland Conference falls into the mid-major category, which me, essentially means that they only get one bid per year. And that's it. Maybe if one team maybe stands out from the crowd, like, say, a Butler, or uh, every once in a while you hear Memphis out of the Conference USA, you hear Butler out of the Horizon League, you hear those teams come up because they, they've been playing very well. They played against big, cali big caliber opponents like North Carolina, uh, Michigan State, Texas, and they, they, they defeated those teams. But for the Southland Conference, that's not quite the case. One bid, and that's it. That's all they get. So for a lot of teams out there, it becomes time to scrap and time to fight. Say it, it's time to put up their dukes and try to fight to get that one conference bid. For Texas State, the road's not going to be very easy, and it's going to be very, very difficult based on the way they played this season. And on their side of the bracket, it kind of doesn't help them because the teams that they have to play are teams that they kind of struggled against in the regular season. For the Bobcats in the Southland Conference tournament, it all starts with er, all the other eight, with the other eight teams in the tournament on Wednesday, the ninth. It all starts for everyone, and for Texas State, it's going to start off against Southeastern Louisiana. 8:30 in the Leonard E. Merrill Center in Katy, Texas, a neutral side game for everybody. But it'll start off for Texas State against the fifth-seeded Southeastern Louisiana Lions. That's the very first game Texas State will have to play. And so when we look at that game, let's kind of break that down a little bit and kind of sh kind of kind of uh, shed some light on how they played against L North Southeastern Louisiana earlier on this season. For Texas State against Southeastern Louisiana, it was actually a pretty successful win. They, they struggled, though. They struggled a little bit. They actually had a 13-point deficit in the first half that they had to overcome to win this ballgame against the Lions. But the Bobcats made a good effort, and they ended up winning the ballgame back on February 23rd, 82-69 against the Lions. Uh, a big win for Texas State. They were led by Tony Bishop, who scored 22 points and had 10 rebounds in the ballgame for the Bobcats. So for Texas State, that first round game, you don't want to say that it's a lock that they're going to win, but it's, it's the, if they can play the way they did against Southeastern Louisiana, like they did again, uh, like they did against them on February 23rd, then it'll, it'll give them good odds to win that ball game and move on to the second round. So let's kind of let's kind of talk about the second round. The they'll play if the Bobcats do happen to win against Southeastern Louisiana on Wednesday. Their next ball game will be on Thursday, March March 10th. They will play the winner of the McNeese State and Nickel State ball game. McNeese State, the one seed, Nickel State, the eighth seed, and the last seed in the tournament. Against those teams, Texas State, they were one for two against those two squads this year. 
Against Nickel State, the Bobcats defeated them, the Colonels, 75-60, and this was back in San Marcos back on the 5th of February. They were led once again by Tony Bishop, who scored 70 points against the Colonels, and it was not a very difficult game for Texas State. Nickel State has been kind of off and on all year, and they ended up getting the eighth seed, and they, they managed to have to work to get that eighth seed. They, they finished the season. Nickel State finished the year 14-13 and overall, and 8-8 eight and eight in conference play overall this season. They're and the Eastern Division of the Southland Conference. McNeese State, though, that's the wild card for Texas State and a wild card for every team in this Southland Conference tournament. They are the top seed, and they defeated Texas State, the McNeese State Cowboys. Defeated the Bobcats 97-92 in that ball game back in in Lake Charles, Louisiana, on January 15th. Uh, early ball game for both squads. It was for Texas State Rios who came up big for the Eddie Rios, I should say, who scored 21 points for the Bobcats. Tony Bishop at that ball game. Tony Bishop only got 17 points. So for Texas State, their leading scorer, like in the, in the Lamar game a couple of days ago. You know, excuse me, not the Lamar game, the Sam Houston State game, the leading scorer was not able to get anything done. So you got to credit McNeese State in the ball game for limiting Bishop and his point total and limit, limiting him in the rebounds as well. So the Cowboys defeated the Texas State Bobcats back on the January, on January 15th. For, for Texas State, if they can get the, past that first round game, they have at least a good opportunity to at least make a good game out of that second round game. Once again, though, it's going to all depend on whether or not Texas State can win against southeastern Louisiana. If they can kind of rise themselves out of this funk that they are in after losing two stray games, two games that, 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 that of, of which they could have won. We'll see what happens, though. We'll see what happens with the Bobcats. Let's look at the other side of the bracket, though. Let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about the other side of the bracket that features the other four seeds, uh, including Northwestern State and the UTSA, Northwestern State number two, the Demons number two seed, and the Roadrunners of UTSA in the number seven seed. They're the top, the the first game on Wednesday. They're the, they're, they are the noontime game. That's going to be an interesting ball game between those two squads. Northwestern State, though, has been pretty good this season, so expect them to move on rather easily. Don't count UTSA out, though. They're very good. The Roadrunners, they, they've, been, they've, been ha they've been known for making games interesting. The other game, though, Sam Houston State against Sam Houston State going up against Stephen F. Austin will be the marquee game. The marquee game of this conference tournament this year. They are the 230 game on Wednesday. The third seed Bearcats of Sam Houston State and the six seeded uh, Lumberjacks of Stephen F. Austin. That's going to be a big game because these are the last two Southland Conference champions from the previous two years. Last year it was Sam Houston State winning and the year previous it was Stephen F. Austin. So Interesting ball game there. Both those teams are bitter, bitter rivals against each other. They are they 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 they, they regularly fight each other very very hard during the season. In fact, during this year, it was split. Stephen F. Austin defeated Sam Houston State on January 26, 63-49. They lost the most recent game on March the 2nd, which only, which was only seven days, which was only a week ago. A week ago tomorrow, or the 9th of March, it was a week ago when they lost to Sam Houston State. The the Lumberjacks did 55-40 against Sam Houston State. So that's going to be a really, really good ball game. Both squads are very talented. Both squads are very good. And both squads have the opportunity to make it all the way to the final game on Saturday afternoon. And you, you got to imagine, the winner of that ball game could very well be the representative of the top side of the bracket in that championship game. So yeah, mark that one down in your calendar. Stephen F. Austin and Sam Houston State, the 3-6 matchup. So when it all breaks down right now for Texas State, though, going back to the Bobcats, it's going to be a very difficult road. Let's not make any let's not make any doubts about it. This is going to be a difficult one for Texas State. The Bobcats are going to are going to be facing a very difficult road, even on the very even on the very first game against Southeastern Louisiana, and then they're going to have to defeat McNeese State. This is the McNeese State team of which has defeated Texas State and has the top seed in conference. Should Texas State make it? They'll have to play against either Stephen F. Austin, Sam Houston State, or Northwestern State. All three of those teams, very, very good. So for Texas State, that's how it, that's how it's going to roll out for them. 
hopefully we'll all see them on Saturday afternoon. That tournament, that conference tournament final game for the Southland Conference will be, tr will be televised on ESPN2 at 3 o'clock. Hopefully we can all see Texas State in that ballgame. Thank <laughs> you.